All right, so we're up here in Vermont. There's two different places that we're interested in ROVing. One is the Stope that's flooded, and another is in a wind. So it's gonna be a multi-step adventure, starting with the Stope tonight, and we'll actually probably have to camp in the mine in order to accomplish this mission. Let's get in there. I'm anxious to see what's below since this mine's supposed to be huge. So here's where it gets a little confusing. It goes down, it goes up, and it goes straight. Going down? Uh, I think we're gonna go straight. That's fantastic. That's not a mine car, but that's the damn closest thing I've seen to a mine car. So I'm very pleased. I mean, it's incredible that for wood sitting here in such a moist place, it's still intact. All right, so we're at the bottom of the mine here, right at the water table, and we're getting ready to put the ROV in. All right, so we're a little over 20 meters down here in this stope, and this has potential to go down over a thousand feet, which is absolutely incredible. But we're only at about a little over 20 meters and we've hit a dead end and it looks like a stack of gob rock. That means that this rock was stacked here purposefully. It's not a collapse. So maybe we're in a worked out section of the stope that dead ends and there may be another way around to get to the deeper part. All right, so this is some uh, cave glamping. We got a uh, <laughs> very fancy campsite here. M Mike is just sleeping right on the ground on like some on a bed of rotted wood. I got an air mattress. We we got our uh, boil in the bag meals, and below us is the water that we ROV'd. But yeah, it's about 10:30 or so, and we're about to. to get to bed after we have our dinner. So we'll see you in the morning. All right, I think I'm gonna crawl in this sack and go to sleep. All right, it's about six o'clock and we just got up and we're packing up to LiDAR scan the mine. And neither of us really got an excellent night's sleep because our sleeping pads uh, tended to malfunction. My air, my air mattress deflated, and Mike didn't have a uh, a, a, a uh, sleeping pad, so we were both right on the on the dirt uh, on the rock rather, which really sucked the heat out of us. During the night, both of us heard the bat flying around above us, right above us. So it just showed that this is an active high vernacular, and it was great because I had asked that earlier. Why don't bats use it? So then I heard the, the growling of an animal, which ended up being Sandone snoring. <laughs> so yeah, no other, no other noises uh, other than the, the snoring and the bat flutter. Yeah, so not the greatest night's sleep, but still a night's sleep. And now we are still here so we can LiDAR scan the mine and then move on to ROVing the next section.
So look look back at what you just climbed over. Oh my god! It's an ore car. Oh my god, that's fantastic! And these are the wooden tracks. I saw them on the other yeah. side too. This is fantastic. It's still on the tracks. See, look at how they like mortised and tenon or like notched out the the ties, so it's wooden tracks. There's some ore car axles here. So this is one of the cleanest ROV runs we've ever done. You can see the tracks on the floor. You can see the woodwork holding back tons of, of waste rock. And it just keeps going. It just keeps going in the same direction, down at the same angle. So let's follow it and see where this goes. I mean, we went on for, and I'm going to, it's a guesstimate on our part, about 400 plus feet and at least uh, 150 to 200 feet down. And there was everything, the tracks, uh, uh, t gobbing, um, uh, all wooden structures still standing. It was incredible all the way down there, beautiful clear water. So it was a really bonus for the end of our weekend up here.